What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory School of the Marina and I've got asked a lot of questions here in the past about how we do reels, how we do our bolt snaps, whether they're double enders or standard bolt snaps. So I'm going to make a series of videos here showing you how I personally rig my reels and my buoy systems for use and show you just how simple it is. Now the first thing is you want to pick out a reel that works for you. Uh, these little plastic ones from Scuba Max, that's what I use. They're very inexpensive. They come in different lengths. I think you can get it from a 50 foot to a 75 foot all the way up to a 100 foot. Um, but the first thing that you want to do is whatever you decide to go with. Let's say that you need a 75 footer. What you want to do is actually buy the 100 footer and then you're going to pull about 25 feet off. Now the reason we say that is, is because when the reels come, they usually have way too much line on them. So you're not going to be able to use the little holes in the side of the reel because of all that line. So if you need 75 foot, buy the, the 100 footer and pull you off 25 foot. So I've already done that. I pulled off about 25 foot here. And, but don't throw this away because I'm going to make another video showing you what you can use this for when you're tying on bolt snaps and stuff like that. But once you've got that 25 foot pulled off, you don't want to leave your ends just by themselves like that. So the first thing I do is of course just take a little lighter. You just want to singe the end a little bit, press it down, and now it's not going to come unraveled on you. Now to attach this to a buoy system, there's several ways that you can do it. Uh, the way that I do it is just a very simple knot system. And I actually want to put two knots in here. So what I want to do is come down maybe about uh, you know 10 inches to a foot, something like this right here. Uh, it's not very much at all, and I want to tie that point off, creating a big loop. Now, I'm going to get just a little bit more here, and what I'm going to do is create this gigantic loop here, and all I do is just tie a figure eight knot to secure it. Just like that. So I've got a big loop. If you don't want the excess, it's not a big deal. You simply just cut off the excess. And as with any of them, you just want to kind of secure that knot down, melt it down a little bit. And usually I'll just melt mine down then flatten it out and that way it doesn't come undone. But now I've got this gigantic big loop. So if I'm going around something, let's say that I'm using this buoy system here, I can simply put the line through the buoy and then pull tight and the the reel and the buoy is attached but they're still it's not quite done and if you got real thick gloves on when you go to undo this girth hitch if you will you're not going to be able to pull it because especially with thick gloves you ain't going to have dexterity you're not going to be able to release that so i'm going to show you how we can make it easier for you to release that so the first thing that i do is after i got a big loop now i want to tie a little loop and the little loop needs to be up here at the top part up here so all I'm going to do is come up a little bit. I'm going to come down, say, about two inches or so. And I'm just going to tie me another little figure eight here at the end. And you don't have to do a figure eight. You can pretty much do a, an overhand knot or something like that. But I'm just going to tie a little, little loop at the top. Okay? So i got a little loop, and now I have a big loop. So once again, I can attach to a reel system or, or a buoy or anything like that. I have the big loop, which I can pull my reel through as simple as that. I can cinch it down, but now what that little loop does is it gives me a pull. So when that girth hitch is created, it gives me something to actually pull out on to loosen it back up. So if I ever need to release the reel from the buoy, I can simply pull on that with big thick gloves. It comes done very easily. So that is how I rig my reel system. I get one that's about 20 foot longer than what I actually need, and I take off that 25 foot. So here's 25 foot I've taken off, but I don't throw it away because I'm going to show you in another video what I use that for. And then, of course, I tie a big loop into the end. And I, this one's probably about 6 inches or so. You can do it a bigger or smaller. I wouldn't really go any smaller now because depending on what size reel you got, it may not be big enough for the reel to go through. But anywhere, say, 6 to 10 inch circle loop, if you will, that's what I've got. And then, of course, at the end, I tie another little loop that is nothing more than just a pull loop to undo the reel and the buoy system. So now how do I secure this guy? I'm simply just gonna wind it up till all the excess is gone. Now I can actually utilize these holes. Now, if I take a double ender here, or you know, your working double ender, and I secure it, it can still come unraveled. So what a lot of people will do is they'll sit here and they'll try to 
clip into the system like that. Well, the problem is it can still come unraveled again, okay? So what I like to do is I'll take that excess, and once I've got, I don't know, about two inches there, I'll simply pull it through one of the little holes. So I'm gonna pull through here, it's locked in, and I can hang it. Now, if you're OCD and you don't like it hanging sideways, see how it's kind of tilted there? If you don't like that, all you gotta do is take what's left, run it back through the next hole, pull through, and now when you're having it on a D-ring or however you plan on holding it or clipping it to you, now it's gonna stand up straight up and down. So guys, that's actually how I secure mine. Uh, in the winter time, if I'm diving really thick gloves, I won't put that extra loop through right there. I don't mind it dangling a little bit sideways, but I, I do that simply because if I do have thick gloves, it's kind of hard to loosen it. So all I do in the winter time is I make go through one hole. In the summertime, I'll go through two holes if I'm not wearing thick gloves, and that helps secure the reel to my BCD or pocket or anything like that. Now, as far as the SMB of choice that I use, all I do is use the same side of the double ender here. And I don't really like these plastic clips. A lot of times I'll go ahead and break these off. I just personally don't like them. But what I'll do is just take the same side of the double ender, secure it to the loop of the SMB, and it's hung on there. So now I can clip off to a D-ring, I can put it in a pocket, I can clip off anywhere I need to, and everything is together. When I'm ready to deploy it, I simply secure my double ender, un pull out the first loop on the reel, do a girth hitch, open my SMB, and then of course I can deploy it to the surface. But guys, that is how I prep all my reels that I use. I take the length that I need, and I pull out, or I get one that's about 25 feet longer than what I actually need, pull off that line, that way I still have the length I need, and I can utilize the holes that's in the reels. And one last thing that I'll show you, is on all my reels, I pull out about 15 foot of line. And when I get to 15 foot, I go ahead and cut it with a pair of scissors or a knife. And I put me a little fishing swivel. Now, this one's brass here because we dive a lot in the lake, but you can use uh, a stainless steel, which would be better. But I actually, at the 15 foot mark, I'll put me a little fishing swivel. And what that's used for, let's say that I'm in limited visibility and I need to hang and do a safety stop for a while. If I shoot this buoy to the surface during my safety stop and I can't really see my gauges real well or something like that, I can utilize the line itself and I can feel that swivel to let me know when I'm exactly 15 feet. So I can simply secure the reel off. The buoy goes to the surface and I can hang and do my safety stop at that 15 foot mark. So that's another little trick that I do. Simply take your little uh, stainless steel or brass swivel, tie it in at the 15 foot mark, and you're good to go. But guys, if you got any questions on this, I'm gonna do a couple other videos about tying on bolt snaps and stuff like that to other items such as flashlights or slates or anything like that. But if you got any questions, simply put it down in the comment section below. As always, check back each week for new videos. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.